Hey guys, this is Drew with the Kucha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, my brother's gonna go head to head with Christian from Treasure Town, trying to grade some coins, but let's get this video started. So last video, we talked a little bit about fake slabs, and basically, you know, getting to know your grade is very important when you talk about, uh, you know, buying a coin either in a slab or when it's raw. And so we feel like this video will be very informational and helpful to you. Make sure to get out a piece of paper and pen and let us know what your great thoughts would be on these coins also. If you guys want to check out a really cool video, we're uploading uh, something on the Freedom Coin Show podcast. It's going to be visual, talking about a $250,000 sting at Royal Coins Houston. You're not going to miss that video, so make sure to click that after this one to watch that also. Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and I'm joined with Drew and Casey, brothers who own Akusha Collectibles, and we've been filming a bunch of content, and we thought we could do a competition with each other and uh, versus all the viewers. It's a guess the grade, except this time instead of uh, just hearing my bad grades, well, we'll, we'll find out if uh, Casey, who I'll be competing with, will be giving us some bad, medium, or good grades to go along with some of the material that they had purchased recently, but the grades are covered up, so... Um, yeah, let's get right into it. We're going to start with this 1866 Shield Cent. I believe that that was the first uh, year that they had um, put these out, and I'll zoom in so that you can sort of grade along with us. But, um, you know, it looks mint state immediately to me. Um, it looks like there's a little bit. I don't know if that's a wipe or just something going on with the planchet, but uh, I have a grade. Do you have yours in mind? We'll just go on the honor system that will say what we think, uh, Casey. Yep. All right, so I'm going to say um, because of that, I think, you know, strike looks pretty good. I would guess Mint State 63 on this. I was thinking along the lines of Mint State 62. Okay, well, uh, maybe we'll get the commentary from Drew and explain why you think it graded that way. Yeah, so taking a look at the coin, I think there's uh, just a lot of light marks out in the fields around the design on the obverse of the coin. Uh, the reverse looks pretty nice, but that's not really what comes into uh, the account on most of these coins. It's going to be the obverse. And this one was actually graded mint state 62. All right, next up we've got a Mercury Dime, um, 1935S. Um, and uh, to be honest, well, I can kind of, oh, no, no, no. I think that it's it's going to, I could see the grade uh, up there in that it's going to be full bands. Um, so I, I wasn't sure if the sticker wasn't fully covering it. But How do you um, give you guys a bone, you know? It's just... Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're, we're Maybe I'll give an eye out to explain what exactly that means, but looks very clean to me. I mean, a few little nicks in the in the face, you know, that you should be able to see on the video. We'll take a look at the back, you know, very clearly split band right there. You know, nice reverse. It's got luster, but um, nothing crazy over the top. So uh, I've got my number in mind. Are you ready, Casey? Yes. I'll I'll, let you go first. Okay, cool. I was thinking on this one, it's either a five or a six full bands, but I'm going to say uh, that it's a mid state 66 full bands. I'm going to say uh, 65 full bands. All right, Drew? Yeah, I think uh, Casey was spot on on this one. Uh, the reason being is because of just of all that uh, kind of just, I don't think, that, I think that's some striations right on the face and in front of the face as well. Nothing that was, you know, happened during circulation since this is a mid state coin, but. Uh, just the way the coin was treated when it exited the mint and how it was minted. And this one just didn't measure up to a 66, but it is a 65 for sure. Great. Um, next up, we've got a 1941S Walking Liberty half dollar. Um, you know, nice, uh, you know, a little bit of toning there. And I'm probably looking right along the, uh, you know, the, the leg there and, um, you know, having some opinions right to start. But back looks pretty good. I don't know, Casey, do you need any more time, I sort of have a immediate um, number that comes to mind. Could I look at the uh, obverse again? Yep, perfect. All right, I'm thinking Mint State 65. I just think that's nice for the grade, um, but it's not a series I have a ton of experience with. What are you thinking? Yeah, I was thinking the same, uh, Mint State 65. My assumption is just looking at the high points on the front and the leg, the leg is really damaged, uh, and that kind of contributed to my... Mint State 65, I think the back looks flawless, though. I think that they downgraded because of that damage. Drew, what are your thoughts? 
Yeah, I mean, 65 is the correct grade, and the reason being is because a lot of the S-Mint walkers have a weaker strike, and the strike, you can see from the head at noon all the way down to 6 o'clock, it's just, there, there's a lot of missing detail there, and you can see that it's kind of almost looked like it's rubbed, but it's actually just the strike of the coin, and that's the reason why this one didn't get higher than a 65. Cool. Um, well, I think we got four more coins left, and, you know, no drastically off uh, comments so far. This one's in 1946, Walking Liberty, half dollar as well. And maybe I'll just show, you know, in terms of what we were talking about on slightly weaker uh, strike, um, you know, probably on the right versus the left, but there might be some other uh, reasons that this would have a different grade. Mm, same thing looking at the back here. Um, let me look at the front again and see if, you know, check out the fields, check out different aspects of this coin. And yeah, I've got a number. Um, let me know if you do as well. Yep, I have a number. Um, my inclination is towards uh, mid state 65 plus. I think that the luster is very nice on this coin. I think they might have given a bump because of that situation. But yeah, that's where I stand. Yeah, I was going to say my, my thought was mid state 65, but that's a nicer one than the previous one that we looked at. Um, I, I, there's not any great reasoning and I'm, it's not like I'm an expert grader, so who knows if I'm right, but, uh, I'm not sure that has enough for 66. Yeah. The tried and true grade on this one is probably a 65 to 65 plus. Um, the reason being is just, uh, it's a stronger strike, but there's a lot more hits on the high points. There's a few coin rolls that are a little bit hard to see on video, but, uh, really nice luster on the coin. That's what puts it in the gem state category for sure. And, uh, you guys are pretty close on that one. Cool. Mm, I guess for competition's sake, did they get a plus on the label? Uh, they didn't didn't get a plus on the label. The OGHs don't, didn't hand those out, so but I still could see that happening today, possibly. Do you think you would submit it for a CAC review? Yeah, I think that one has a shot if it if it ends up staying around long yeah, enough. Yeah, if the jump merits a CAC uh, CAC sticker. Great. Oh man, this is something that I immediately cower in fear at. It's a circulated Indian head scent, and I'm terrible at circulated copper, um, unless it's unk, but I don't think that it's unk. 1909S, you know, from San Francisco, you can see that S mark right there. Um, and yeah, I mean, who knows? With, with my bad grading skills, you know, it really could be, uh, you know, anything. But um, yeah, it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it, you know, I think a lot of that is on the holder and not the coin itself. It looks like uh, Liberty is definitely there. Um, I am so bad at grading this stuff. I have an idea. Maybe I'll go first. Um, and, and hopefully I'm not going to show that I'm super bad. But I would guess that this is sort of in the uh, XF range. So I would say like XF 40, maybe 45. But I would guess XF 40. It wouldn't shock me if it was a... I'll say XF 45 as a final grade. I'm going to be relatively liberal. Um, I... as as well as you don't uh, have a lot of confidence in our grading of copper, but I was thinking along the lines of AU50 range. Yeah, so you both are, are wrong, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I don't really, I'm terrible at grading any hits too. All I know is the grade, but I think that this one in, in terms of where it is and how circulated it is, it's it hugs more of the XF40. Okay. And uh, a lot of the time when you're looking at uh, Indian head sense, people look at Liberty in kind of the, the head there and see what, how, how pronunciated it is and this one uh, doesn't have very much at all mm -hmm. and so it's it's just a very interesting game and uh, you guys are pretty close though. Does that knock it down enough? Is it is it graded in the high VF range or is it an XF40? It's an XF40. Okay. Now do they focus mostly on, on the band of her head that says Liberty? That's what I gathered from from this but it's, yeah, it's still a nice coin I just it's hard for me to figure out as well. I don't know how to grade these too well but I I do know that's what they talk about a lot. Great. Well, it looks like we're back here with another uh, 1936S, so another San Francisco mint, um, you know, half dollar. And it's, it's got a pretty pleasing look to it as well. You know, I, I'm formulating some opinions on it, um, probably between two grades for me. Uh, that would be surprised if it wasn't one of them. But, man, that reverse looks nice. Um, and, you know, I'm probably going quicker than I should if I was trying to buy this coin, but I have a, a number that I'm going to throw out as a guess. And let Would me know you like me ready. to go first? Sure, go for it. I'm thinking uh, Mint State 64. Okay, that was going to be mine as well. The reasoning for me is I think the strike is a lot more mushy on it, 
Um, and I ha and there's a, a few little grazes, but uh, the grade I was between would be four and five. So if it was 63, I would feel more wrong than if it was a mid state 65. Drew? Yeah, so uh, this coin graded mid state 65 by NGC. Um, the reason being is there's a, you know, the strike is a little weak, as you can see there. The luster, though, is really nice. Um, there are a lot of lines out on the right side of the obverse of the fields, but I think those are, are, are polished lines of this coin. And the reverse really makes up for the mess up on the obverse, in my opinion. And uh, 65 is what they graded this one. Do you think that, in your opinion, that it would be able to cross to PCGS and get the same grade? I think so. I don't think it's a great 5, but I do think it's uh, one that deserves that grade. Do you think that it would CAC if we sent it to CAC? No. Okay, great. Well, we'll uh, have an update if you send it in. Maybe I'll, I'll update the viewers. And here, this coin, I'm not sure. I might recognize it from yesterday. Um, we had done a video that might have included this coin, but it also could be a different one. It's a barber quarter, um, nice, flashy, uncirculated coin. Um, well, at least that's my opinion on it. And uh, let's check out the back here. Um, you know, I have a number that I'm thinking, but uh, let me know if... If you're ready, I can go first this time. I'm ready. Cool. I'm thinking mid state 63. I think that there's, you know, there's some lines that appear. You know, I don't think that that's uh, actually a hit, but there is like a little scratch across it. There's some chatter on the face. At the same time, it's got a lot of luster, so it might be a 64. But I think that there's, from a technical perspective, I'd probably be more inclined towards that uh, 63. Plus, I think that there's a little X on the back. So, yeah, my, my guess is that drops down a little bit, but wouldn't be shocked if it was higher than a three. Yeah, I definitely agree with your 63. There's a lot of distracting marks on the high points, and you can't really uh, shy away from looking at them. So 63 is where I was at as well. Yeah, so this one was actually graded at minus 64 by NGC, and those hits on the obverse, um, they aren't as distracting as some of the hits you would see on a mid-state 63 coin, but the luster on the coin is really nice, as you can tell, um, and also the reverse, it's pretty much almost problem-free. The X that you see on the shield there, that's actually just toning lines, so that's something that is, isn't actually damaged. And so I think the reverse really uh, made up for the obverse's hits, and this one I would say is a mediocre MS-64. And you probably know this, Christian. We, we're going over all of these grades. Um, I like to stay, and Drew and I like to stay on, on the conservative side when it comes to grading because you don't really want to get your hopes up, especially if you're trying to submit something raw or you think that it has the potential to possibly upgrade or CAC. Makes sense. No, great, uh, great, um, you know, tips. And it was fun to sort of have a little higher pressure. Not only am I doing it with my viewers, but also, you know, we're discussing the grades uh, with each other and then doing a breakdown. So thanks for making this video possible. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. We're trying to create more distinct and interesting videos every single week, stuff that's action packed and full of information. We hope this video was that for you. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe and comment your thoughts on each individual grade of, of the coins. We would love to hear that down below, but until next time, we will see you in the next video.